Okay, when you're filling out your color wheel, you wanna generally start with the lightest value, which is yellow. Lightest base value is gonna be yellow, and I want a pretty heavily pigmented yellow. I've got everything drawn out and labeled ahead of time so I don't forget, because sometimes I forget which hue is meant to go where. So I labeled them for myself with just Y or YO for yellow orange. And if I were to go directly into the next one, which is yellow orange, it might bleed and I don't want that. So I'm gonna clean off my brush here. I'm gonna grab some orange, use my mixing areas, make sure it's the shade of orange that I want and the uh, intensity of the pigment. And I'm gonna skip yellow orange and I'm gonna go straight to orange, orange. Orange is of course a secondary color. You can mix up your own orange using red and yellow, but conveniently our palette features an orange. And I need to add both water and pigment because I started to run out. Sometimes you hit resistance of what's the, uh, called the tooth of the paper, the roughness of the paper. And when you can start to feel that resistance, it means you need more liquid. There's my orange. I'm gonna clean off my brush, squeezing. And then the next shade I'm gonna, hit, um, I'm gonna go to is just red. I'm gonna use 017 for the red. Start with an outline typically when I'm trying to be neat and uh, do geometric shapes like this because the paint will not spread beyond where it's wet. So if I do that outline, pretty neatly, I can then be a little less careful while I'm filling it in. Might need a little more pigment. There we go. Cleaning off the brush again. And then I'm gonna skip to violet. Uh, this palette does not have a great dark purple. It has uh, this uh, 176 uh, red violet shade, which is really nice. But to get a real deep violet, I'm gonna have to mix in a little bit of 147. It's a blue, maybe 149. You can kind of experiment with them and mix up one that looks good to you. But we want a deep, dark purple. Generally, I combine equal parts of uh, this 176 and uh, 147, 149, but whatever looks good to you. You want a deep, dark, true royal purple. And this is gonna be the darkest of our base hues. So I might need to build it up in layers in order to get it to look the way I want it to. I'm trying to be super neat on the edges because the paint isn't going to spread beyond where I've wet the paper. And I'm gonna do the little dab motion here to get more pigment on the paper without turning it into pulp. If you apply too much friction to the paper, it's gonna get all pulpy and gross and uh, we want to be super gentle with it and not break down the, um, the fibers uh, that make up this paper. So there's our purple. Cleaning the brush again. I'm gonna get it until it's mostly clean. I'm gonna 
next one is going to be a blue, which I'll do a straight 147, which is pretty close to ultramarine blue. Got to be careful so I don't end up smearing my purple, which is still wet. I need a bit more liquid here so I can just move around what's already there. The water is your carrier. The water will carry the pigment. I'm gonna just evenly distribute this very gently because if I apply too much pressure on the paper, it's gonna start to break down. And that is a thing to be avoided. Uh, for green, I'm gonna go for 092. And for this, I think I'm gonna rotate the paper so I'm not in the way of my wet areas. Got a pretty deep hue here, getting some liquid to move it around. And here is where I'm gonna need to stop and let these dry before I can go in and put in all the tertiary colors. So far we have the primaries, which are yellow, red, and blue, and you've got your secondaries, orange, purple, and green. Uh, so there is one portion of our color wheel. Now that the color wheel is dry, I can start going in and filling in the tertiary colors. So I'm gonna start with the yellow-orange, where I'm gonna mix up, you guessed it, yellow and orange. And I'm gonna fill that in here. Uh, 076 in the palette is a pretty decent yellow-orange as is. A little macaroni and cheese color, should be a mid-step between orange and yellow. I'm making my own custom mix for aesthetic purposes. Yeah, on second thought, 076 isn't orange enough. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the uh, 024 that's in the palette make myself a good middle step. It's important to remember that watercolor is always going to dry a little bit lighter than it looks when it's wet. There's my yellow orange. We've got the brush cleaning action going on again. And I'm going to head down to red orange. I'm going to mix up some red with orange. Looking like a pretty decent mid-step already. There's my red orange, down to red violet, and the 176 makes a nice red violet just on its own. Might need it a little bit more pigmented than that though. The 
this looks like it may need a second layer or at least more pigment. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Again, with the dabbing motion, if I want a more saturated color, but I don't want to turn the paper into pulp. Pulpy paper just looks gross. Blue Violet is up next. And I've got a good start already from the purple that I'd mixed, but I think a little bit more 149, which is pretty close to a Prussian blue, if you're familiar with uh, two watercolor pigments. Sometimes this color is called indigo, like the Roy G. Biv acronym for the, uh, for the rainbow. I being indigo. Dabbing is a good way to get a nice dark value without shredding the paper. Okay, and now we're on to my favorite color, blue-green. Adding some 092 to my blue mix over here. Get myself a nice dark teal. Maybe a little more green. Yeah, that's better. And the final, yellow, green. Let's see what we're dealing with here. It's a little dirty. Clean the palette. And I'm gonna dab my paper towel on the paint cake itself. And then we have a mostly completed color wheel. Where you can see the opposite colors are gonna form your complementaries, just like we did in the scale earlier.